Hello and welcome to Little Free Library Unbound. Thanks for being here with us today. Um, we are excited to be here for our second chapter and we're gonna start off with just a couple housekeeping things so everyone knows what to expect. So um, we have our Q&A function on this time around. So if you have any questions for uh, Kate DiCamillo or Dr. Heather Butts, we will um, have a live Q&A session at the end uh, time permitting. So you can submit the questions using the Q&A function and we'll put those together and grab those at the end. Um, if you have any comments along the way, um, observations, other things like that during the discussion, you can feel free to drop those in the chat. My colleague Shelby will be available in the chat to answer any questions that come up um, as far as Little Free Library in general or um, any technical issues you have. So you can feel free to drop those questions or concerns in the chat or privately message Shelby and she'll get you taken care of. Um, and I think we are ready to get started. So we're gonna play a quick welcome video for you. I'm Lexi Neely, Programs Assistant at Little Free Library. And I'm Shelby King, Director of Programs. And you're watching Little Free Library Unbound, a digital event series bringing together Little Free Library stewards, patrons, and supporters to discuss books, literacy, stewardship, and more. In just a second, we'll be joined by some of our favorite book-loving, community-building, all-around fantastic friends. So we invite you to fill up that cup of coffee and get settled in. We hope you enjoy this conversation. Oops. So chapter two of Unbound is entitled Kindness Isn't Canceled. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about the great um, different initiatives we've seen our little free library stewards doing in response to the COVID-19 pandemic and offering uh, different items in their little free libraries. But we're going to start off with a little poll to see who's here with us today. So if you would answer this poll and tell us which best describes you. Are you an LFL steward? You have your own little free library. Are you a LFL user or patron? You regularly use libraries, but you don't have one of your own. Or are you just an LFL supporter? You're a fan of the organization, but don't really use libraries or have one of your own. And if you'd like, you can let us know where you're from in the chat. We always like to see who's viewing. We'll leave that poll open for a couple more seconds. All right, let's see who we've got with us today. So we have a lot of Little Free Library stewards attending um, Unbound today, and we also have a lot of supporters. That's awesome. And lots of patrons, so folks who like to use Little Free Libraries. Thank you again so much for being here. We're so excited to have you. And now I would like to welcome our moderator, Anita Marina, who is the National Board Chair of Little Free Library, and she'll monitor our discussion today. Hi, everybody, and a special greeting to those of you in Texas and in other parts in the South that are, have been suffering with all of the uh, horrible climate uh, change weather, really bitterly cold, and for the rest of you in the Midwest as well. It's, it's, uh, I'm in Maryland, and it's not too bad here, but um, you know, I feel for you. I'm right there with you. And I'm really pleased to, to host the second installment of uh, Little Free Library Unbound. And our, our theme today is kindness isn't canceled. And actually kindness is really the hallmark of Little Free Library stewards and supporters and every this entire community. And we're so, so pleased 
to, um, to talk a little bit more about that. And for those of you who aren't stewards, uh, want to be stewards, we'll have lots of information at the end. We want you to, to listen to the conversation here, but then be engaged, get involved, uh, do more and learn more about what Little Free Library does and what it is and how we can all support one another. Um, yesterday, February 17th, was uh, Random Acts of Kindness today, day, and I'm so pleased that all of us continue to do what we can. Um, thanks to Lexi and Shelby, and we'll, I'll resume with you right after that with Heather and uh, Kate, and we'll also share a little bit of infographic and data from our 2021 stewards survey. So first, a little bit of a PBS video. When the coronavirus emerged in the U.S., people who share books on a small scale and countless others who wanted to help their neighbors saw a new need. Boxes and stands offering free household goods, food, and other supplies appeared with signs saying, take what you need. Now, there's a growing network of sharing boxes nationwide, and many began as part of the nonprofit organization Little Free Library. Part of the routine for the Hillman family in Cottage Grove, Wisconsin, is a daily walk and a visit to the little free library they added to their front yard last summer. So this is our little library. We'd never heard of these uh, until we moved to Wisconsin about six years ago. And a lot of neighborhoods that we'd been walking through and had seen around town would occasionally have a little free library. And we were curious about what they were. Once we discovered what little free libraries were, we were utilizing them. So I guess part of it is just for our own um, selfish needs to have an exchange of books. The Hillman's Library is one of more than 100,000 of these book sharing boxes installed around the world since the movement began in 2009. After the first few weeks of Wisconsin's coronavirus stay at home order, the family wanted to be sure their little library box was still safe and meeting the town's new needs. We had books in the library and we just put a few cans of food in the library and then we noticed they were gone. So we thought, well, maybe there is a need here in our community. They weren't alone. Many stewards, all volunteers, began transforming their little free Hi everybody. Well, we're we're uh, going to move on. Uh, as you can see, the Little Free Library uh, stewards have really come to the forefront in helping our communities in so many different ways. Not only through the pandemic, but by increasing book access and um, and doing the little things that make a difference in a community. Um, what these are the results on your on your slides right now are statistics that are from a survey that we just recently completed, January 2021, in which we asked stewards how they were helping. 32% of volunteer stewards added sanitation methods like hand sanitizers to their little libraries. 40% of libraries kept them open during the pandemic and have seen an increase in visitors. And 31% of our stewards shared essentials like food, household goods, games, crafts, and school supplies, and often also offered a really wonderful visual cue that the community is there for you. You can go to the second slide. Yeah. Okay, and what we'd like to do, yeah, there you go. I was waiting for the second slide. I knew there was more. Um, and 72% of volunteer stewards have met more neighbors because of their little free library. And if you're like me, you know, the, the library can, you know, attracts people, but it also brings people together. So conversations have always Always occurred that they're shared. On average, one book is shared in a little free library every day. Uh, that amounts to millions. And this is around the world. We have more than 100,000 little free libraries around the world. And 92% 
of people say their neighborhood feels like a friendlier place because of the Little Free Library. And I think that's why so many of us are trying to put them in places where there isn't book access, where there is a special need, where there are ways in which you can just feel better about everybody around and to bring people together. So we're very pleased at what, and we thank all of our stewards for all of the great things that you're doing uh, around the country, around the world even. So thank you all so much. And now uh, I think what we'll do is introduce one of those stewards who is just a special person and a wonderful steward. This is Heather Butts in New York. She's co-founder of Health for Use Incorporated, a nonprofit organization which focuses on college readiness and preparation. She's also assistant professor in the Department of Health Care and Public Administration and Public Health Law and Bioethics at Long Island University, as well as what is known as a Little Free Library super steward. She has six libraries on Staten Island and all of you are super stewards. Heather is doing a great number of things. And what we want you to do, hello, Heather, is tell us about what your Little Free Libraries have done during COVID-19 and how you are helping the communities that you and your library serve. Thank you. Hi, Heather. Hi, how are you? Hopefully you can hear me. <laughs> How's it going? Really great, really great. We had a lot of fun in our dress rehearsal, I have to say. So this is just icing on the cake for us to have this conversation again. Yeah, it's wonderful to see you again. And I want to thank you for all the amazing work that you do. Uh, you know, I, I run a nonprofit and the work that board members and certainly a board chair does is it's incalculable. So I uh, just want to thank you for doing the real precious, amazing work for an organization like Little Free Library. So tell us what your Little Free Libraries have done in this really stressful time of COVID-19. Well, so we uh, have a number of Little Free Libraries, as you mentioned, and we have Little Free Libraries in New York City, all the way to lovely Lake Como, New Jersey, and in between. And we started our Little Free Library journey six years ago when I was doing a cleanup project at the 120th Precinct in Staten Island, New York, and uh, basically saw some young people with their parents who I asked their dad if they'd be interested in a couple of books I had in my car and gave them to him and he gave them to uh, his children. And I thought to myself, hmm, this is probably be a pretty good spot for a little free library. Um, I linked up with one of our city council members in Staten Island, a wonderful council member named Debbie Rose. And uh, she was interested in the project as well. So we started out actually with putting one in a park in the Lieutenant Leah Park in New York, in Staten Island and then put one in a precinct and then every precinct in Staten Island and then put some in uh, some other public spaces and some schools. And now we're up to approximately 60, six zero Little Free Libraries throughout uh, the city and uh, areas of New Jersey. So see, that's how it begins, begins everybody. It's just one little thing, you pass a little free library and then the seed is planted. And I think that that's what's so great. And um, we do have some questions that were posed for you. Um, Kay wants to know, how do you get diverse books and pantry materials consistently without breaking the bank? And that's what <laughs> every steward always wonders. I don't. How are we gonna manage to do all this? <laughs> I it's a really, really great, great question, Kay. I mean, I, you know, I don't need to tell the 52% of people on here that are stewards what that's like. And sometimes, you know, you do pull into your own wallet. If you know there's, you know, a series of books that maybe the neighborhood really likes. I, one of the little food libraries you work at, there's a huge James Patterson <laughs> um, following. And I've been told on no uncertain terms to make sure there's James Patterson books. So, uh, you know, it depends on the neighborhood, right? But we're very fortunate in that we have a lot of amazing neighbors 
and community members that donate. We also are very fortunate that we have organizations around us that are always giving of books and pantry items. There are times when I will get special items because I know that they're needed, but it's a labor of love. And I recognize that for every item that I get, there's tons of other items that are gone in small ways that are kind of unable to be measured. And so we've been very fortunate with all of our sites uh, that they basically more or less take care of themselves. Great. Um, so Sadell wants to know, using our Little Free Library, how can we spread even more kindness? Are there special events or activities do you know of that spread that joy? And that, of course, is the love of reading, the love of books, the love of just basically sharing, I think. I love this question. No, I Maybe I'm a little too kind of philosophical or meta about Little Free Libraries, but I I, some people see Little Free Libraries literally as a box with books. I do see them that way, but in my mind, they're much more than that. They're a window or a door or some sort of <laughs> opening, figuratively, into a completely different world that people can go into. And so what does that mean? So to me, a Little Free Library is something that you can use as a springboard to a college readiness program. Um, a local author who can speak, um, a reading program within a school, a, an event when we can get back to larger events that can be done with people in the community. So I really see Little Free Library as the springboard to be able to do pretty much anything that you can think of as far as it could go. I'm excited because we were asked, some of you may be involved in this um, the Unplug uh, Project, National Day of Unplugging. And we're part of that too, actually. So I'm really excited about that, March 5th through 6th. Uh, and that's another way to utilize Little Free Libraries uh, in terms of a scavenger hunt. So I would say be open, be imaginative, Think about the Little Free Libraries beyond its four or five or six, depending on what shape it's in, <laughs> eight <laughs> walls. So I would think about beyond it and more as a jumping off for the amazing places that uh, you can go with it. Yes, I, I love it. You've got some good responses from our, our listeners here, the scavenger hunt. Also, you know, it's kind of thinking of it in terms of six degrees of the Little Free Library, you know, of your Little Free Library. It expands outward. And don't forget that, you know, people seem to think, some people think that it's a competition for public libraries. And yet, in fact, we have a lot of public libraries who sponsor Little Free Libraries. Yep. And this is a great way for, the, for them to get information out about their programs, yep. to link up with Little Free Libraries, to get, link up with their communities and serve and connect. It's that network that builds. And I think that that's what is so exciting, both you know, all sorts of, of libraries and that expanding community. Um, our right, and, I, and just one more thing I would say about that is a real li a, a, a library, there's a difference between them and the Little Free Libraries. The library expects their books back. <laughs> so they, you know, when you take a book from there, at a certain point, they might, they might, you know, give you some time, but eventually they want their books back. So a lot of times we work with libraries and they'll say to us, oh, we, we got some books, but you know, we, we can't use them. Would you like them? Or we'd love to do a program with you and work with you in terms of some of our librarians working with the Little Free Library and doing a reading program. We actually even have some librarians. We have a, on our, our YouTube, we have a YouTube channel. We have librarians that have been working with us to do 20 minute daily readings for students as part of our Little Free Library program. So again, as, as sort of far as your mind can take you is where I would say you can think about spreading kindness through Little Free Libraries. Yeah, book talks and all sorts of things. So, so for those of us who are new, you know, there are new stewards out there or people who are thinking, okay, I want to get started. What do I do? What would be, and this is from Tracy, what would be your top three tips? I know it's hard to limit it to three, but top three tips for newer stewards out there. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was a new steward and I remember thinking to myself, 
I've got this idea now what and so <laughs> the topic, <laughs> and then the what happened uh, the three things I would say would be number one always go back to why you started to do this so always think to yourself why am I doing this and you know as you become a, a veteran like me, an old grizzled veteran, uh, you know, you, you do have to go back to that and say, I did this because I saw a dad and his two young children kind of standing around not having anything to do. And I thought to myself, well, the joy of reading. So never forget why you started to do this because, you know, when it gets tough and you're out there putting another couple hundred books in and so forth, it'll bring you back. Uh, the second thing is listen to the community. You know, whether it's we want more James Patterson or <laughs> we want Moby Dick or we want whatever we want, um, really listen to your community because sometimes you can get so caught up in what you think the community needs that you're not really actually asking the community, what do you need? And I know for us, a lot of the conversion for the little free libraries to our pantries was because we had people that we knew had serious needs around food and COVID. And the last thing I would say would be always be willing to try new things. So again, don't get so stuck in what you think your little free library is or should be that you can't listen to somebody else's really amazing suggestion for it because a lot of the ways that we have grown with our little free libraries is because we listen to other people and their phenomenal ideas and that took us in a completely different direction. So that would be my third piece of advice. Yeah, and I would just add two more things is never be afraid to ask a question. Oh. No question is not is, is stupid. So never feel that. And then the other thing is tap into our networks, our Facebook, our Pinterest, all of the different ways that people are sharing ideas and tips and concerns. And, you know, it's it, like everything, it's a community that has its challenges of, you know, people asking the same question, but that's that's what it's about. And there are people who will answer that question and there are people who will keep guiding you. So I think that's great. So I, Heather, you'll be coming back at the end for yes. more questions. And I, mean, uh, I just want to thank you for these, these answers. Okay. And we are moving on. So thank you so much, Heather. Love it. Bye. Bye. <laughs> and our next wonderful interviewee, uh, the, I'm so delighted because I'm such a fan. Um, is the wonderful Kate DiCamillo. She's, of course, a New York Times bestselling author of children of YA books from Flora and Ulysses, Because of Win Dixie, The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane, Ramey Nightingale, you know, so many, so many. And of course, um, I don't know if you know this, but there is a movie about from Flora and Ulysses and it was releasing tomorrow on Disney Plus, uh, um, Disney Plus. And we have a little trailer for it before we get to Kate. And of course, not only will you fall in love with them, but of course you'll fall in love with Kate all over again, which of course we do. So let's talk, watch the video first and then, then we'll get on to Kate. Superheroes stand watch when danger closes in and save those in need. But they have one thing in common. They never show up in the real world. Until Ulysses. Every superhero comes to us with a purpose. We don't always see it at first. Because we don't always know where to look. Flora! What is this? I am Ulysses. Born anew. Holy unanticipated occurrences! Did you type this? He's a superhero. What? Do you have any enemies? I'm here about the squirrel. Danger lurks everywhere. Is he? He's flying. There was a change in the air. And the world was filling with excitement. Go, 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 go. Who's hungry? One now! Come on! Yes. 
people look to the skies for someone to save them. So the universe sent us Ulysses. Can you talk? Okay, that's not really talking, but still! Okay, that was so much fun. And I have the pleasure of introducing Kate. But first, what I have to say is the real superpower, the real superpower is the, is the, uh, is the use of words and the magic of words. And who's a superhero? A writer, a wonderful. Uh -huh. And so introducing one of our favorite superheroes, Kate. D. Camilo. <laughs> Hi, Kate. But I, I'm still, I've watched that trailer like, I don't know, a thousand times. And, and I'm sitting here like an eight year old going like this and like <laughs> laughing my way through it. So, hey, hey. Uh, how, how are you? It's good to see you. Did Was it just yesterday that we did our practice it session? Is that right? Yesterday, wasn't it? We were talking 1918 flu and pandemic. Yeah. And, you know, weather, yeah. you know it. And it was so much fun. So. <laughs> Um, I'm sure that there's a, a superhero squirrel there lurking somewhere behind you outside, <laughs> tapping at the window, but we have business to do, so. We do, uh, we have questions to answer. <laughs> we have questions. We're gonna start with these questions and then we'll come back with questions posed during the session. So okay. Shirley has our first question for you. Which one of your characters would have a little free library <laughs> and what books would they place in their library? Oh, we're I, a fan of Little Free Libraries. So. I am a fan of Little Free Libraries, um, and I'll talk about that at greater length. But that's, I don't even really have to think about that. I know for a fact that um, Flora Buckman would have a Little Free Library, and she would put comic books in it, and she would also put um, uh, how to manuals in it. She's a very practical kid. But I also think that India Opal Baloney. Uh, would have a little free library, and I bet you she would put uh, books about dogs in it. And yeah. Sweetie Pie Thomas would probably help her with that. So yeah, that's an easy one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you bring on the hard questions. So, well, this isn't so hard, but we know you've walked around in your neighborhood and you love little free libraries in your neighborhood. So do you have a favorite one? And do you ever seek out little free libraries when you travel? Um, I, I'm, I've always got my eyes peeled for little free libraries and um, I, I was in uh, the last, <laughs> well, I haven't traveled for a while, um, but when I was in uh, Nashville last year, I remember being excited to see one right across from the friend's house where I was staying. It's like, oh boy, let's go visit it. Um, but I, as far as my neighborhood goes, we have so many little free libraries. And what I like to do is um, when I have a new book come out or when a book comes out in paperback, I'll just, I'll sign a bunch of them and walk around. I try not to pick a, a favorite, but I could go, I mean, I could get, I get like 25, 30 books. I could get rid of them within, you know, uh, less than a, uh, an eight block radius from here, we have so many. And and then sometimes just me personally as a reader, when I'm out walking, I'll see something that I want and I'll go, oh, okay. And then I'll, I'll come back uh, with a book to put in there so that I can take that book out. So I, I, I love them and um, they cheer me up and they give me hope, Little Free yeah, Library. Did you know that there's a Little Free Library in the South Pole? Is there really? Yes, there is. There's a steward who has, has made it his mission to, and he's also, an, I think he's a Nobel laureate uh, who has made a number of little free libraries. And now this is his mission to build little free libraries in different places. And it's really, really special. Um, and the other thing is, is in paradise, when paradise had the fire, um, we know that there was a house that was burned down. It was one of our stewards. And the only thing that was left was her little free library. And she not only um, helped to, to save that little free library, but she, where, where they were evacuated to for the period of time that they were evacuated, she then started sharing books and putting, helping out with little free libraries in the, the neighboring neighborhood. So it, it, that's how we build communities. I think it's really terrific. Um, so here's, here's a question for you. Did you write to any of your favorite authors when you were a child? This is Portia. 
And if so, why did you write to your why, why did you write to these authors? I, I, I never I never did. And you know, it's funny because um, back in the day when I used to go around and talk to kids in classrooms, I would always uh, talk about uh, how I became a writer and how um, I never, it, it, kids always wanna know, did you dream of being a writer when you were a kid? And I'm like, how many of you have gone to a bookstore and uh, met a writer or gone to the library and met a writer or had a writer come into the classroom. And I would say it was probably 60 or 70% of them wherever I go. And that just wasn't happening when I was growing up. And so I never met anybody who was writing books and uh, books were so magical to me, still are, but they were so magical. I just never thought that human beings really had anything to do with it. Uh -huh. So I just didn't, ever think that there was a, a person behind the books. It just never occurred to me. It's it's so strange. I guess it's a shocking lack of imagination on my part. But so I, one of the things that I love to tell kids when I talk to them is uh, here I am. Um, I'm not that exciting, um, but I get to do this really, really exciting thing. I get to tell stories. And if you really want to do something, you can do it you know and to me that is one of the the best messages that i can deliver is that if you want to do something it doesn't matter um who you are if you apply yourself to it so what are what are some of the things that that people um think uh, don't don't realize that authors do and you know have to do as they build their characters what are what's in your toolbox in what's in my toolbox um, uh, well, you know, it's funny because um, it doesn't matter if it's a, a group of kids or a group of adults. One of the first questions that always gets asked is where do you get your ideas? And, um, and to me, it is, it, it, it is the first job of a writer to pay attention to everything. So I always have a notebook. I've got the notebook right here, right beside me right now. And when I go out into the world, I make sure that I have a notebook. And so I'm always listening and looking and paying attention to everything. And you could even say eavesdropping because it's like when you're a writer, everything is your business and you have to keep everything open, your eyes and your ears and your mind and, and your heart. And so that to me is a huge part of being a writer. That and the other thing is that people, um, and this is again, is it's adults and kids think this, that if you're supposed to be a writer, then when you sit down to do the writing, it's gonna come out right the first time. And I am here to tell you that is not true. So it doesn't matter how talented you are, um, writing means rewriting. So you have to be kind to yourself. You have to find a way to sit down and do work every day and uh, forgive yourself for it not becoming right right away. Um, it, it's showing up and doing the work that matters. Okay, I'll get off my soapbox now. No, are, are, are there characters that are, you can't, uh, you know, you don't want to say this is my favorite child, but there are the characters that you've created that, that stay with you or that, you know, you call upon. Uh, particularly at a time like this in this crisis, um, what are the characters that, that continue to resonate with you long after they landed in the pages? I do feel like uh, uh, like all of them have my heart. Every once in a while, I will dream about a character from a book and I pay particular attention to those dreams and will write them down. But like, I've thought a lot about... Um, India Opal Bologna and, and, and that dog, Win Dixie, um, in this time, because that, that was my first book, but it was also so much a book about uh, finding each other and finding community. Um, and I feel like that's what we need so much right now is to trust each other. And little free libraries are a good way to do that, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, thank you, Kate. We're going to actually shift, it sounds like, into our live Q&A. Uh, we're going to bring Heather back okay. and uh, we'll continue. I, one of the things I did want to say when you were talking about conversations and overhearing, I remember Joan Didion was my favorite, was one of my favorite authors. She used to ride the bus 
And so that's, she would take notes all the time. That's, that's so funny because I always, sometimes kids will say, are you afraid you're going to run out of ideas? And I say, have you been on a city <laughs> bus recently? I mean, like if you get on any kind of public transport with a notebook and, and, and pay attention, ideas everywhere. That's, yep. that's great from Joan Didion. Okay, yeah. now we have a live Q&A. Okay, now, now, now right. we're really on the spot. Okay. Right. Um, hold on, let me just, I'm looking for some good questions. Oh, there you go. Um, let's see. Here, hold on, I'm just trying to move my. I thought all the questions would be for Kate. I'm like, nobody's gonna ask me a question. <laughs> no, look, Heather, Heather. I, you know, I personally want to ask Heather questions, but I, I grilled you yesterday, so I'm not going to do it again today. Yeah, yeah. I think the audience doesn't know about my, my other life as a public health person, so they're probably wondering, what were they talking about? <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's so fascinating. Go, we'll go through the ones that are, that are right here on the screen. We've already got some. Um, this is from Karen P. Congratulations on the new Flora and Ulysses movie, Kate. So how do you make peace between the differences between book and movie? And that's a really good question. Yeah, well, you know, it's it it it's funny because writing itself is a compromise from the first time you put the first word down on the page of this this beautiful idea that you've carried around with you, you're compromising and um, the vision. You never, you, it's never as beautiful in, in, on the page as it is in your head. And then, uh, and then when I edit. I have to like let things go. My editor will want something. I think, oh yeah, okay, maybe not. So I'm compromising there. And then the book goes out into the world and people read it and I, I can't stand over their shoulder and tell them what I meant or uh, see if they laugh where I hope they'll laugh or cry where, they, where I cried. And so writing a book is a process of letting the story go. And it's the same with the movie. It's just, it's just a way of kind of like letting your child go out into the world. And so by the time it becomes a movie, I just, I, I see it, it, even from the time it becomes a book, it's really not mine. It's its own thing out in the world. And, and I hope that people respond kindly to it. And I hope that um, it touches their hearts, but I can't control it. And that's, and so it's just that it, the whole thing is a process of letting go. Yes, absolutely. And, and we did talk about your, you know, characters or your favorite. So Debbie wanted to, Debbie S also wanted to say it meant the world to her second grade students wow. when you wrote to them and send them a picture, which is always wonderful. So well now, we, this is for Heather. So Heather, how, uh, can you talk a little bit more about how you structured your scavenger hunts? This is from Karen Kay. Um, scavenger hunts, hunts are always fun. So let's talk about how you did yours. Well, actually, Karen Kay, it's a work in progress. It's happening even as we speak. And I um, cannot, I, I normally don't take credit for, <laughs> for I don't know, oh, well, somebody else did it. It's somebody else's idea. This legitimately is the work of um, our friends at a National Day of Unplugging. So they actually, we were in, uh, the Wall Street Journal did a piece on a bunch of little free libraries in New York and we happily were uh, in that piece and they read it and reached out to the writer and reached out to us and asked if we were interested. And so I gotta tell you, it's been a real adventure to learn about scavenger hunts as they relate to little free libraries. Uh, I would definitely recommend if you're interested in learning more about this particular one, it's actually, it's actually devoted to little free libraries. They're, the one on the 5th and the 6th of March. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to also give you information offline about some of how we've done it. So I'd be happy to talk with you. And, uh, but it's been great because you, you put the clues together and then one clue leads to another. I mean, admittedly, we, we have 60 little free libraries. So we're not, we're not, there's not no lack of them for us, but uh, it's actually been really fun to be able to see it morph over time. Um, so it's a work in progress, but it's coming along. Yeah, I think uh, Shelby and Lexi will put on links and Good. everything to, to uh, things that we've mentioned along the way. Okay. Um, it's always, always good. And people geocache their little free libraries or they do little clues or dioramas. And I think that that's an, another way. Um, Heather, another question for you is from Andy H. What are the good ways to get foot, more foot traffic to your little free libraries? I live on a, on a peninsula 
and worry not enough people will come by? Are there ways that we can drum up the traffic? Are there ways that we can reach out yeah. to people beyond our community? Um, okay. I mean, that's not like Kate, a peninsula, like a whole peninsula. I know. I, I, don't, I don't know what that means, Kate. I don't know what that means, Anita, but it's it sounds exciting to live on a peninsula. Um, <laughs> So in any event, I, I, okay, so I'm a New York City person, right? And so New Yorkers walk everywhere. So, but interestingly enough, I have these two little free libraries that are within a block of each other. And one gets a ton of foot traffic, but the one just over, it's sort of like, you know, it doesn't get as much foot traffic. So I've done a couple of different things. I mean, one is to put different kinds of books. I actually noticed for the one that gets less foot traffic, people really seem to like it when classics are in there. So, you know, I'm like Nathaniel Hawthorne or <laughs> Uh, you know, <laughs> go goes like hotcakes. Um, yeah. So you know, mix it up in terms of, and the other one, by the way, is the James Patterson one. And Kate, I got to start putting some of your books in some of these, and then, well, I'm sure yours will, you know, fly off the shelves. So uh, will you s send me? Uh, I'll I'll send you some, Heather. So just uh, yeah, send. I, I would love it to. Yeah. people being on a panel has its privileges <laughs> <laughs> and we can do little themes too when we we talk about sharing the um sharing books the ways in which you can get traffic um yeah. talk to your local paper get yourself in the news talk if there are little yeah. networks you know next yeah. door or so on um yeah. one of the questions from the little free library team of course this is random acts of kindness did you do any random acts that uh this week yesterday or uh in honor of this special moment and uh you know I think what I did, I was really kind to my husband. So I wasn't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, we, we did a lot of fun. We, we do a lot. Um, or do something themed like bird, bird watching or find something that else. I think uh, some of your fellow stewards are saying, you know, give your free, little free library a Facebook page, an Instagram. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, again, the only other thing I was going to say is in New York, it's interesting because New York is a town of foot traffic. So we walk everywhere. And so uh, we, we, we have us not, you know, most of us don't have cars. And, you know, if we do, you, you leave them at home. So um, we don't often have a problem with the foot traffic. But when you do, when you have, you know, a little free library, that's kind of off off the beaten path a little bit, right? Having themes, changing up what you put in there, changing up, you know, some of the, you know, the pantries, the one that was a little more ignored actually really ramped up when we started putting uh, food items, you know, non-perishable food items in there and so forth. But I would say to definitely get yourself a Facebook page, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Snapchat, get yeah. yourself on social media and, you know, tell people what books are in there and what you're going to do from week to week. Get, make, make the little free library live, you know, give it its own personality. And uh, people will really uh, flock to it if they feel that it's a living, breathing entity. Nathaniel Hawthorne, that's where I, I'm still like, wow. Yeah. 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 People like, really, really got into the classics at this little free library. It was actually pretty stunning. But whenever we would put in, you know, the authors from 1800s, the, it really the, the books would fly. I was Wow, really I love it. I love it. I love it too. It's great. I think the other thing, um, this is a suggestion, um, for Andy, you know, think about, you know, Center for the Book or the regional authors or regional little special things about what your, or the history of your peninsula or, or you know, little tidbits that you can share. Um, you know, there, there could be other ways to get people to come. I love the little free libraries that paint rocks and then people are sharing like little painted rocks or all these wonderful little artistic, um, you know, trinkets that they put. Um, and again, going back to scavenger hunt, make me make your place a destination. I think that's always really, really, really fun. Um, and the last thing I just want to say to Andy is again, it goes, some of it goes back to what I was saying before. If you think about your little free library, beyond its physical form. <laughs> I know that sounds, <laughs> but if you think about it as beyond just the physical 
box, but you think about all the wonderful things it can do outside of its physical form, then I think it expands a little free library to so much. And then lots of what you're doing ties to the little free library, but it's not tied to the actual physical space of the physical of the little free library. And then that's, you know, the whole universe is yours. Yeah. And people have done things like uh, little plants or vegetables or seed exchanges. Oh, There's cool. a little free library. And, and so you can do that and have some wonderful books about, about um, you know, gardens and so on. So there's lots of there. I think somebody just posted a little way to organize. I love this chat. I'm, I'm I know I can't stop looking, at, looking at everything on the chat because it's so much fun. Um, and Andy, one more thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so somebody asked, it was a question for Kate. Are you writing any books during this coronavirus time? Are we? You know, yeah, you know, I've got, um, I, 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 I'm so glad that I am, you know, I didn't know how I, it, it, because it's been so fraught emotionally, but I have kind of like, I started um, in the, when everything just, when we went into lockdown, I started doing um, a little writing tip of video on uh, my Facebook page and where I was just saying to kids, hey, now, if you've ever thought you might want to write, now's a good time. Um, and here are some writing tips. And so I thought, gosh, if I'm encouraging other people to write, then I feel like I have to be writing too. So that was kind of how I started uh, the pandemic. And then I just kept on and I found that it was anchoring for me to like, to, to have a story and to be, and to like, let the story uh, hold me up you know, and so it, it, it has been a, a, a real gift to, to write during this time. Yeah. You know what I think would be really fun if, you know, if you have kids or students or um, libraries can do this, because I, 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 I don't know if anybody knows this, but I used to run the Read Across America program. And one of my favorite things were teachers and librarians and students who did book little reading videos about their favorite book. So they would do a really fun little video to get you excited about a book that they read. And it was hilarious. So doing a little book talk kind of gets people going with your YouTube page on, uh, off of the peninsula, um, some yeah. other kinds of ways of moti motivating. And it's, it is really, as Heather says, a real sharing, sharing opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. These are really fun. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm worried that lots of people are doing seeds, which is great. I'm a big gardener now that I've been isolated in my little area. Um, and then, yeah, people have been doing masks and a uh, lot of fun. Oh, but, yeah, I've seen masks, which is great. Yeah. So the other thing that I really love is I've watched, um, I can't, I don't know who the steward is, who gets dressed up in a Triceratops costume and <laughs> goes out and goes and feeds her little free library or goes out and it is to just watch these videos. They're really fun. fun. There are somebody, okay, there are dog treats. If you're a dog lover, there's, yeah. and I know Kate has her dog and I used to have one. Um, there's lots of ways that people are doing also little extensions. And I don't know if you remember the dog uh, stick library that was next to somebody's little free library. They had a little, you know, crate that was for the, the dogs that went by. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are doing homemade fabric bookmarks or homemade, you know, and actually with your um, little, okay, we're gonna wrap up. Um, with your books that are tattered and, but they're illustrated books, people are making book bookmarks or book cards uh, out of that. So what can I say? So we're, um, I'm sorry, we're, we could talk forever and Kate and Heather and I have already made a date to go and have another whole conversation about yeah. the 1918 flu. Right, right. We're gonna make Heather work. We're gonna make Heather work. Put me to work for the more second job. So um, what we wanna do is we're gonna have to move on, but um, I we could go on forever and I know you guys could too. We do wanna make sure that we share Heather's organization, Heather's um, website, Kate's website, ways in which you can do um, get involved with the Little Free Library and its programs. Don't forget, we have lots and lots of wonderful programs. And I will thank both Kate and Heather um, for this conversation. I am going to release us three so that we can actually get to some business so that you can stay 
in touch with um, Thank you. Little Free Library. Uh, we have more Little Free Library Unbound chapters and I hope both of you join us because they're always a blast, as you can tell, they're always fun. And we hope that those of you who are tuned in today enjoyed our conversation, but also um, we just wanna thank you. Uh, we wanna thank you for all that you do. We know that this is a really tough time and we know that the ways in which we can bring ourselves together, bring each other together is, um, is very, very special. So, and I also am gonna turn it over to this amazing staff of Lexi and Shelby. The Little Free Library staff is wonderful. So here you go. Thank you so much, Anita and Kate and Heather. This was such a wonderful time as always. And um, as um, Anita mentioned, it's Random Acts of Kindness Week. So we've had the chance to highlight some of the great not so random acts of kindness that our stewards have been doing all throughout the pandemic and before and certainly beyond. Um, so if you can um, make sure you're doing a random act of kindness for a friend or a neighbor or stranger, um, especially with all this cold and snow we're having, if you can, if you're able to shovel for a neighbor, that's always a sweet gesture. Um, and we thank you so much for being here with us today. This is our second chapter and next month, our third chapter of Little Free Library Unbound. We're going to talk a little bit about book deserts and sharing books where there are none. Um, book deserts have huge implications and tiny little nuances. So we're going to talk a little bit about that and the ways different people are addressing book access in their communities. If you're not already, we encourage you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest. Um, we're also on LinkedIn. And if you want to get more information about upcoming Little Free Library chapters of Unbound or other Little Free Library updates, our newsletter um, is available and has all kinds of great information, not only for stewards, but for supporters um, and our other friends as well. Let's see here. Oh, after the show, um, you will receive a survey. So if you would take the time to give us our feedback, we're excited to give away 10 copies of Flora and Ulysses um, by Kate. And um, so if you fill out that survey, you will be entered to win one of those 10 copies. So keep an eye out for that in your email. It should come tomorrow, probably from me. My name is Lexi. And um, yeah, we will see you next time. Thanks so much for your time.